Hello everybody and welcome back with CAC. In today's video we are returning to Vita Carnis, the uh, YouTube horror series by Darian Quilloy. Uh, we made it about halfway through the first season last time and now we're going to finish it up with the remaining ones and also with the um, season 2 teaser uh, by the looks of it. So yeah, uh, we're going to kick it off the next one with the Species Anomaly Report, which, if I remember the order of creatures correctly, should be about the Harvester, so uh, let's go check that out. Flashing lights, loud sound, and graphic content. Okay, thank you for the warning. Oh, excuse me. Species log 014, abnormality documentation, harvester, yes. <clears throat> Notable population density shift discovered between the dates of 1989 and so. Uh huh, August and October. Maps display chart of population of harvesters located on a monthly basis. Okay. So, August 1st, sort of all around the bottom of the area. And in that little lake thing, uh, the island in the lake. Oh, what a lovely family! I sure hope nothing bad happens to them. Okay, they're going for a walk in the forest. Lovely day. They were kind of like the roots spreading out. Oop. So it goes from August 1st to... Okay, they're starting to move further north. By the looks of it. Oh, more of those roots spreading out. This isn't going to end well. Oh, I can feel the hairs standing up. Oh! Oh no! Oh yeah, there's blood. Blood in the water by the looks of it. That's not good. Oh. oh, it's melting. It's like flesh melting away from a skull. Oh. Nope, oh, the kid's gone. It got the kid. So yeah, if I remember rightly, um, the harvester drags you underground and then basically digests you while you're still alive. Which must be a horrible way to go. They're all moving closer to that lake. Oh, upside down. So the family kid dead. Oh, that is a really cool effect. Oh, that's gross. So it got mom as well. Cause ah, oh, that's right. The harvester uh, would use smaller animals as bait to bring in larger animals. So it used the child as bait to bring in its own mother. Oh, that's sadistic. Oh, another page there. Oh, those sounds, the screams, like the really distorted screams, that just cut through me. That was just, oh, 
Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that was pretty... Very short one. You know, not a lot happened with it. It was mostly just, like, pictures and uh, brief animations, but the sounds and, like, the implications of those animations were just very brutal. It would just, just be, like, a horrible way to die, to be, like, digested while you're still alive. It's just... Ugh. Anyway, let's move on to Flavor Enhancer. That sounds delightful. Oh, more flashing lights and loud sounds. <coughs> Flavor. The most crucial component to enjoying a good meal. The way food tastes is what makes eating so pleasurable. I, as a texture-based eater, I but would argue that texture is... every little detail you could oh. possibly want? Ooh, triangle. That is why we at New Triangle ah. Co. have made it so that you may enjoy every single one okay. you take. With our product, the Flavor Enhancer, you can extract so that every symbol last morsel of taste from your plate. It is a bit With sus. With overwhelming demand for this essential product, Experience even since true our start earlier this year, we have delivered what you wanted. Now introducing the Flavor Enhancer Deluxe. Ooh. Now packaged in a larger size and modified recipe, there is now even more savory goodness to go around. Wow. Since our debut in mid-1990, the Flavor Enhancer is shown to be a major hit with our product flying off the shelves. Huh. The Flavor Enhancer Deluxe will allow us to satisfy your growing, tasting needs. Now allowing you to add even more enhancer to your dinner. Making your okay, food be, even be better careful with it. You're enjoy. kind of wasting it on the table the there. Flavor Enhancer Deluxe, Imply available on shelves now. below 60 now. degrees C for optimal flavor. New Trier Co. Experience below True Savor. Oh. Oh, they're activating my sleeper cell. Hmm, what's the, the significance of 60 degrees C? Now allowing more generous amounts of enhancer at a time. Flavor Enhancer Deluxe. Hmm. Now available in stores near you. I'm trying to think, because I like body temperature is roughly 40 degrees C. So. Ah, my ears. Oh, Make sorry. There we go. That's it off my Twitch. New deluxe size. Make tasting even more awesome. Oh, they, yeah, just going straight up subliminals now. Your kids with this essential part of every meal. I was just about to say that I like how the foods are getting less and... Wait. Everything is happening at so much as I'm trying to say it. The foods are getting, like, less and less complicated as they go along. And I'm pretty sure just then, after this one, they played the mother screaming. Uh, let's try it again. Spoil your kids with this essential part of every meal. New trier Yeah, that sounds like the mother screaming after the um the harvester took the kid. Flavor enhancer <laughs> deluxe required for all meals. It's no just a piece of bread. Seems, just a little more. Oh, good God! It is crucial to everyday eating. Got nemesis whispering in my ear then. Oh, here we go. The subliminals. Ah! <clears throat> I. Mm -hmm. It's in my brain. Ah. Mm hmm. Well, that's not the least subtle advertising I've ever been uh, subjected to, but there we go. Sorry, I'm having a little bit of difficulty na uh, navigating U uh, YouTube at the moment because they've completely changed the way the buttons work. Because you used to be able to, like, pause skip forward and backwards and then unpause with like a space button and that 
doesn't do that anymore. If you use something other than the pause button, it then it clicks it off basically, and you have to go back and click it manually again, which is really stupid. And I don't know why YouTube has done this, other than the fact that YouTube has ruined a lot of their functionality lately. But um, I've completely forgotten what I was going to say. Oh yeah. Um, so in the order of um, discovery from the documentary. Um, that was uh, the host. And if you remember, the um, host released spores, which control people in order to bring them in, so they throw themselves in to the host to be fed. So that's what I think Flavor Enhancer is, is host spores. So whoever this new Trioco, whatever this organization to do with this triangle is, it's trying to manipulate people to sort of almost give themselves to the the Vita Carnis. Because um, you had that guy in the Meat Snake video, he had the medal on, and the, that sort of suggested there was a kind of sacrifice going on to the Meat Snake, which is how it got that big. And then this one is giving people host spores, which is basically just like sacrificing people with extra steps. So, yeah, I don't know, something, something odd's going on here. And then there was the thing in the Mimic video where there was a cover up trying to say that the guy committed suicide when he was probably attacked by a Mimic. But uh, yeah, anyway, this next one. Which I believe should be about the monoliths is called Uncovered Documents. So. Uh huh. Right. And. Yep. Flavor Enhancer Deluxe. Confidential info. Most complicated, not released to the public. Well, they have been now, so, uh, whoops. Uh, is the ant imagery because of the spores? Nutri-can, scandal, nutri coat is facing. See, it's not pausing. It's not pausing. I was telling it to pause and it wasn't pausing just because of this stupid update. It's not doing it. <coughs> nutri is facing charges after numerous reports of sickness after consumption of their product flavor enhancers only statements made from the company so far dismissing any issues that their product is safe to consume yeah i bet so yeah the ant imagery is got to be for cordyceps which goes into spores the spores of there's that guy again there's the metal oh is that a politician wearing it as well Okay, there's a whole group of them. We've got a shady government organization. Don't know what that is. Don't know what that is. Spores, maybe? Mm -hmm. Yep, there's the cordyceps. Brain. Fun fact though, cordyceps isn't a brain fungus. It doesn't take over the brain. It manipulates the actual movements of the joints themselves. So it's being puppeted around. Okay. <clears throat> the private in organization of containment and research consult association society, Carcass, has been experiencing backlash government agencies about cooperation and violation of newly introduced policies. Huh. Okay. So, are Carcass the good guys who are trying to go against the government agencies? Because the government agencies are introducing new policies on things. And... Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. 
new log message to carcass Oh, okay. And then it moves on to the next video, which is called message. So I'm assuming this is that message to carcass. Okay, so let's go. 1990. <clears throat> In the distant horizon, ah, there's the, the monolith. group of monoliths stand vacant. Although closed off to outsiders, their stands can be observed well outside the perimeter. It is known to have hundreds of thousands of fibers that weave themselves deep underground, all connected in a grand mycelial network. Don't like it. Don't like it. Yeah, kind of. Huh? Right, these are all the bits from... Ooh, wait, hold on. Nope. Stop it. Um, I was saying, these are all the bits that were interspersed with the um, documentary video. And you got the largest ever meat snake. But it says also, largest meat snake vanishes. Which is... Which is odd. Hmm. Christopher Grady. That was the guy attacked by the mimic. Uh, she was as well. Those are the ones taken by the harvester. So those are the tapes we've already watched. That's the migration of the harvesters. That's the singularity at the middle. Moving to islands, yeah, that's what I was thought. So something is on that island. Cult gathering pandemic. Many cultist sites have appeared across the world. Astonishing sight to behold. Hmm. Oh, I suppose we don't get to learn any more about the monoliths so. then. Hmm. Oh, that was the last page being ripped out. Thanks for watching. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. So that would have been the last page of the story then. So let's see if we can uh, figure out what this storybook was. Okay, here we go. Uh, once upon a time, there was a distant kingdom. The kingdom was ruled by a royal family, king, a queen, and a prince. The royal family were magical scholars who wanted to obtain knowledge and expand their kingdom and heighten their uh, mystical abilities they traveled the land and to discover and 
land and sea to discover new places and learn what the something hold the lands hold um the travels on one of their expeditions a great storm struck it was so powerful it swayed the boat the royal family rode and something and the prince out into the sea so the prince got tossed out into the sea after a storm <clears throat> after being stranded at sea the young prince eventually cast to an island injured the prince stumbled his way to a nearby cave he then used what magic he could to put himself into a healing sleep oh my god uh <laughs> i'm not sure i can make that one out uh hmm but the prince's sleep was long he slept like what seemed like oh yeah he slept like what seemed like forever as he slept the land around him changed and grew it was unrecognisable from when the prince first arrived, but the sleep still needed time to heal the prince. Much more time. But it kept the prince safe while he rested, guarding him from uh, elements as the lands changed. Okay, I'm going to have to go back to the guide I'm looking at. <laughs> <clears throat> Outside the cave, during a time of hardship... There emerged something critters. Critters were struggling. They barely had any food to go around, and they would gather whatever they could find. Although one day the critters found the cave while searching for food, they found the prince in a trance in his healing sleep. The critters were so awestruck and enchanted by the prince's magic. Uh, something, something, something. Uh, who is this creature? Why are they here? Are they dangerous? Although they thought, what if the creature could use its magic to help them? It may grow food or heal sickness. They continued to argue about the prince and his magic. The majority of the critters agreed that the prince was dangerous and instead decided should not be meddled with. Although the other critters ignored the rest of their fellow kind, instead they secretly w w walled, w walked the slumbering visitor, visited the slumbering visitor. They snuck what little food they had and carefully fed it to the prince, greatly hastening their recovery. Okay. One day, the prince awoke suddenly. Thanks to the critter's assistance, the healing process had finished very quickly. The prince had fully recovered and was now fully awake and aware of their surroundings. Surprised by the sudden awakening, the critters, the critters ducked and hid from the prince's sight. One of the critters built up the courage to meet the now awake stranger. They crawled to the prince's side and extended their hand in friendship. The prince reached back and together they had formed the bond that would change their fate. Ooh. Oh dear. Well, that uh, that doesn't look too good. I'm not sure what's going on there. That's incredibly blurred. The critter led the prince out of the cave to the top of the hill. The prince had been buried under and showed them the forest. This is our home, full of wonder and beauty. Although the forest struggles to provide for all its critters, we are facing disaster. Can you help us? Hmm. I don't think this is going to end well, you know. The prince moved back, spread his arms, and before him glue a bright light. Mystical shapes and colours, lights and figures. The, settles, the settlers watched with wide eyes, such sublime brilliance. The prince continued his display. He vowed with power, and he held with the help of his kingdom. He shall heal their home. Oh, I can read this one. The prince gathered what he could and then set sail onward. Once the prince returns home, they will come back to the island and return to the critters. And he's got the um, the Nutrico uh, symbol there, which, uh, I don't know, that doesn't bode too well, I don't think. And I don't think whoever he comes back with is going to be too pleased. 
and the missing page from what I understand is from a secret video um, and we only have half a story here but uh, we've got the banner of that triangle in the background so that's like the royal banner I suppose uh, the prince is kneeling before someone, which I assume would be his parents. Let's give it a zoom in, see what it says. One day, while the king, at long last, the prince, a new land in... in which? And now their king... Hmm. So... I'm guessing maybe uh, the prince represents the Vita Carnis, or the new trier, or the people on the side of the Vita Carnis, and the um, the critters uh, represent humans, or at least the humans who first discovered the Vita Carnis, and maybe, maybe in an effort to try and cultivate the crawl because the crawl was the first thing that emerged maybe they tried cultivating the crawl as a sort of response to i don't know human overpopulation and food shortages and things like that um they then started cultivating these more and more advanced um creatures as it were and it's kind of like oh the hubris as man has brought about its own downfall or something like that but i don't know um it does seem to imply that this royal family returns to that island and then causes havoc or at least that's what i'm getting from this so yeah that's the storybook those are all the pages that we found along the way uh say so found that we had along the way so now we're going to continue with the finale of season one. <coughs> and then the teaser for season, season two. So uh, the finale for season one is called Facility Zero. Okay, I'm starting up another tape. Oh, hello. Carcass. Oh, I guess it's not starting up a tape, it's starting up a computer. Right. Mission brief. Alright, there's that island. Yep, there it is. Three ground teams are tasked with infiltrating a previously abandoned mall titled Facility Zero. Right. Which is located in the restricted zone based on our info. Some bass going on in the background there. Oh, the triangle. The mission will take place in three stages. Infiltration, encirclement, and ambush. Primary objective is to capture the facility and seize the items of interest for extraction. Okay. Numerous armed guards are located within the facility. Avoid detection and keep up Ooh, your guard. The singularity. Is that what... Ah, oh, that's got to be what they're holding in there because that's the last thing that's appeared on the list. All singularities. All singularities? Hold up, let me read it again. Uh, several spheres composed of an unidentifiable material have been located in various locations in multiple continents. Multiple continents? Oh god. Um, each found thus far have been located via strange signatures being emitted by the orbs being caught on various devices. Uh, as of this time, this document is written... Uh, four singularities have been acquired. Three more singularities have been in lo have located and are currently being investigated. Descriptions preferred descriptions referred to document blah 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 blah. Instruments instructions are currently as follows. Uh, remain on standby while all singularities have been obtained. Once all entities have been apprehended and contained at facility zero begin stage two of the program refer to document something 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 new trier for basic briefing oh right okay so there's more than one singularity and they found several of them <laughs> so 
So facility zero where they're holding them. Alpha team in position. And then carcass are Ready going into in position. to find them. Gamma team in position. Copy. Beginning phase one. They're uh, neutralizing a harvester to get through. Pathway cleared. Give us a green light. Ah, so yeah, those are all the harvesters that were migrating to the island. They performing. Copy. Uh, green light is a go. Uh, creating a protective advance. ring around it. <clears throat> Soundtrack we're building in the background there. Okay, this is pretty cool. Oh, the crunch of snow. Oh, that's the dead. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's so cool. I mean, I guess this is at the point of the series where they can't really do practical effects. You can't really go out and uh, storm a facility filled with meat monsters. vision now or something but we don't need to see that do we oh a monolith oh I wonder if this was the event that caused the monolith to go all electricy. keep your distance Single file. Okay, we're approaching the facility, I guess. Halt! Is that still a monolith? I don't know. In position, awaiting green light. to the facility. Shopping centre. Yeah, they did say it used to be a mall, so it was like an abandoned mall. Oh. Sounds like someone was being strangled or something there. Have we seen sort of like an infiltration operation in any others of these um, analog horror things, or is this like the first time they've actually, you know, started taking action? Are you guys making your move or what? Oh, there they go. Okay. There they go. Hop, 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 hop. Do with being a little bit more fast paced, but uh... oh, huh. Alpha team in position. We are experiencing mechanical interference. Should we resume? Copy, phase three is still a go. 
Frame to breach. Uh, energy signatures from the singularity, right? Breach in three, two, one. Breach. Oop. I want to see, I want to see what's in there. Oh, it doesn't sound good. Get down! Get down! Put your hands up! 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 Put That is what it said in the document, right? It said that they'd found, they'd um, contained three and found four others. So I guess they must have got them all. Oh, loss of signal. Well, I wonder if they made it out. Well, I guess uh, I guess that's it for season one. Yeah, we'll um, we'll have to wait and see um, what has happened because uh, when did that take place? Did they say it was like 1990 that it happened? I don't think it. Uh, yeah, I don't think um, they actually said what when this went out. Luke, the Duke of Voices, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, because I know uh, it started in the 70s, but it's been running up to about um, the 90s, because they said they discovered the flavor enhancer in the mid 90s, well, discovered the flavor enhancer. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have to see what comes from that and whether it's going to go forward into the uh, into the modern age. So yeah, I just wanted to show out the credits for the last one because that was a, um, you know, a, a good uh, sort of like send off for the ending point. Sorry, I just need to finish my drink. My sinuses have been acting up quite a bit today. I don't know where it's come from, but it's hurting my throat as I talk. But um, <clears throat> yeah, to wrap all this up, we're going to take a look at the season two trailer. So uh, let's have a look. Ooh, some rumble. Ooh. It's kind of like an electronic garble going on. I'm not sure what that was. I thought it was a flag flying in the wind at first, but then it went quite fast. It looked like a ripple on the water, maybe? Okay, the music is ve sounding very much like a lullaby. Which I don't trust at all. There's lots of red pulsing around. Oh, that's like crawl growing really fast. Is it a face? Oh, there's a trimming. There's a snake. Those things are huge. It just looks so imposing. Uh huh. Yeah, those are the monoliths. So if there are seven monoliths and seven singularities. Okay. Kinda. <laughs> 
Fair enough. Well, it seemed like uh, a lot of CGI work in there, which is fair enough. But I hope he's not completely doing away with the um, practical effects. Carcass. Mission summary. Success. Huh. So they took them down, they survived. But what are the consequences of what they did? Hmm. <clears throat> well, anyway, uh, the creatures in there, all like the little sort of like snapshots of them all looked really good. Like even something as simple as the crawl spreading out like really quickly was really cool. Uh, the trimming, doing like that little screech, uh, like uh, the meat snake, the mimic in like, I'm assuming it was in like a bedroom sitting on someone's bed. It's just like, ooh, they all looked really good. But as I say, I hope it's not the end for the practical effects, because even though they didn't look the best, it made them more tangible. You know, it's, it's the whole thing of interacting with something that's actually there. Um, but well, either way. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I hope to see, um, I hope to see more of this when it eventually comes out. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's built up a lot of sort of like world building of things that happened throughout history. We had the long documentary about all the individual species, and then we had like a sort of found footage, um, either found footage or archive, um, information on each of the individual species now it'd be interesting to see them in sort of like a story like actually putting something together which um you know moves in a more narrative manner but overall uh pretty good um you can tell it's very much a labor of love it's probably not one of the best analog horrors out there but it's definitely so it, it's kind of like a slow burn build up to something i think season one was the establishing stuff and that's given it enough of like a foundation to build something with a story which i look forward to so yeah okay uh i'm back sort of like during editing uh post watching to sort of give a rundown of things um that have happened sort of like so far mainly like the story beats and um this uh storybook uh sort of thing so um i'll start off with the storybook because that seems to be uh sort of like the law of the setting as it were so what i think is that the prince the royal family that sort of thing that represents the uh the carnis as it were the vita carnis um, originally, I thought that the prince might have represented the, um, the singularity, or that the prince was inside the singularity, but that was before the Facility Zero video at the end, where it shows you that there are seven singularities, so maybe the seven singularities represent uh, seven members of the royal family and the royal court, or maybe the prince just represents... Um, the Vita Carnis as a whole. Um, so that, I think, it was either some sort of like prehistoric life, like primordial soup, or some kind of extraterrestrial creature which came to Earth, crashed on Earth, like back in prehistory, um, maybe even on the asteroid which wiped out the dinosaurs, and has just been sort of like sleeping in the background uh for throughout all of human history you know just like throughout the earth's history it's just been there dormant hiding inside this cave like the prince um and then eventually as the world grew and the world changed and like uh history eons decades millennia went by uh eventually um you then have the critters to discover the prince and uh, I don't think the critters are any particular group like as a whole but I think they kind of represent humanity 
and then you had like a discussion between the critters saying like oh no we should leave the prince where he is because he's too dangerous and then you got another group saying well we could you know help the prince and maybe in return he'll help us and while most of the critters decided to leave the prince where he was there was a small group which went to um to go and help the prince and i think that small group represents uh the cult uh Nutriaco, that you know that group the symbol with the triangle um and so they are the ones who fed the prince and in the story that would correlate to Nutriaco uh worshipping or helping um the vitacanis in some way um because if we see at the end uh, when the prince sails away, his uh, flag has the Nutriaco logo on it, and when he gets back to the royal family, uh, their banners have the Nutriaco logo on it. Um, so I think basically what it represents is uh, that cult um, helped to grow the Vitacanis, and that's when the crawl came about. Um, and with that, uh, as the prince went back to his kingdom, he's bringing back the rest of his royal family with him and is not necessarily a good thing. So bringing like the rest of the royal family is bringing the other species of Carnis, which begins to spiral out of control and, you know, bad thing. So that's what I think the storybook represents. And what happens next within the storybook is basically the um, the growth of Vitacanis and it becoming like the dominant species on the planet. So next thing we're going to look at is the story beats for the actual real life uh, documentary part. Before we begin, uh, three things sort of really to keep track of on this. Number one is that the information we are given by the government entities are not necessarily to be trusted, uh, nothing new there, because the cult has infiltrated the government. There's a government sect, uh, Nutriaco or whatever it is uh, else that they're known as, are members of this Vitacanis cult and they're trying to, um, what's the word, propagate, they're trying to propagate the growth of the Vitacanis for some means or another. Whether they are indoctrinated themselves to the Carnies, or whether they're doing it with their own free will, uh, we don't know. It'll remain to be seen. So the second thing is that we do have a main character, um, that being the point of view character, the character who is watching the tapes in-universe. Um, and that is uh, Vincent Barrar, who appeared in the beginning of the Penne cooking video, I think. That was his name uh, that appeared in the beginning there. Um, and so everything sort of like revolves around him and he is the one watching the tapes. And the third, I think, uh, I should have written these points down before I was going to say them, but I think the third one was that um, there are notable discrepancies in the videos and there is a reason for that and we'll get to that as we go along. Because the first video uh, in the series that we have is the documentary video. So the documentary video, uh, the first one we see is for National Living Meat Research, but uh, we later learn on the um, conspiracy board in a later episode, I think it's in the message video, um, we have the conspiracy board pointing out different things and it points out that this documentary isn't actually an official documentary, it's created as part of either a school project or an independent project by um, basically a bunch of college students or high school students or something like that. And, and if we look here on the conspiracy board, uh, next to the picture of that one guy who is in the meat snake video, um, says a group of students released the documentary about the carnist species and it included various amounts of sensitive material and defamation. Um, now, uh, they say that they didn't know about the extra material, and what I'm thinking is that's the interspliced footage of the um, newspapers and things like that. Um, but I think that this documentary they made is closer to the truth 
than the later government issued ones because as we know the cult has infiltrated the government so you know the biggest discrepancy probably that people pick up on is the difference between the information on the mimic i think the information on the mimic we get in the documentary is more truthful you know the fact that you shouldn't fight back you should just run away you should try and find um an empty space well an empty place to run to and basically not try and attack the mimics because i think the later one which was the government issued uh psa is the government trying to get more people to fall prey to the mimics because obviously they're in the cult they are associated with the carnies and so we shouldn't trust what it says um and so i think that one of these students making the documentary was uh Vincent Barrar, uh, because the name Barrar does come up later again in the Mimic documentary. Um, no, sorry, the Mimic Survival Guide, the different one. Uh, I think, um, what's the first one to arrive? It's the Meat Snake, isn't it? Well, apart from the crawler and the trimmings. Uh, the trimmings, I'm not too sure, but I think because it had that thing about a mass gathering of trimming, trimmings around the uh, satellite dishes, and the fact that they're kind of being encouraged for people to take them into their homes, you know, they're giving uh, trimming care guides and they're like saying, oh no, it's fine, they're harmless, you know, take them into your homes, it'll all be fine. So I think they're kind of like spies, as it were, the trimmings are an, maybe even a, an early alarm system for mimics because it's mentioned that they look that uh, young mimics look like emaciated trimmings so maybe they're slightly related in that kind of way but then after trimmings you've got the meat snake and the meat snake is probably the first main instance of cult activity because it feeds that big meat snake they're basically sacrificing to it and that meat snake in the tunnel as well uh, let me get it okay so meat snake in the tunnel um, as you can see it had um, seven skulls um, in its, I, I say sphincter, but I guess that's kind of what it is. Um, whereas normal meat snakes um, have one skull as its face, like in the front there. This one obviously is way too big for that, but it has seven skulls all arranged in a circle. And that makes me think of the seven monoliths which also were arranged in a circle and when we got to the final video as well the seven uh, singularities all in a circle so seven is something important to do with this cult and i'm betting this is no coincidence that these skulls have been arranged purposely by the cult for that reason basically um so yeah that was the first instance of um i believe cult activity uh, just go back yeah, here's the uh, the meat snake bit. Um, in the actual video itself, I, I believe it said that the meat snake was 30 meters, which I accidentally misquoted as 30,000 meters because there was like a point there and I thought, yeah, that was big. But um, here in the newspaper, it says it was 40 meters. Now, I don't know whether this means that there were two different meat snakes or whether it was the same meat snake, but it just kept getting bigger after it was discovered. Um, but either way, the meat snake in the tunnel just disappeared. It just went one day, apparently. I don't know how you can lose an entire meat snake, but it happened. And I'm figuring it had something to do with the cult. Because you can see at the bottom here, it's kind of covered by the uh, subtitles. Let me see if I can uh, push that forward a little bit to see if it will change. Oh, no, not really. But it says, largest meat snake vanishes. Yeah, there we go. It just, just disappears. And um, you can see it highlighted at the bottom of the um, the newspaper clipping there. It does say cult activity. So yeah, this is probably where maybe didn't necessarily begin, but was the first time that it actually came to prominence. And it was sort of like around after World War II, I think they said it was, which is how they managed to feed it so much because they had all these corpses from the war and they were just like, there, feed it to the snake. Um, yeah. <laughs> So after the snake, obviously, is uh, the Mimic. And we said earlier there was like the main discrepancy between the information about the Mimic. Uh, one second, I just need to... This is a lot of talking. Mm. 
<clears throat> that was vodka. Yeah. So here we have the Mimic Defense Tape, uh, which you can see here was published in 1986. Uh, I think the Mimics were first discovered around that time. Um, and the Grady Siblings Tape was obviously their investigation into uh, someone Barar. Uh, I didn't catch the first name. Uh, I tried doing research into it and other people also didn't seem to be able to catch the first name. But the important thing is, is that he was someone's father. The father of a young teen who came back home, who I'm betting is Vincent Barrar, uh, our main character. Uh, the listing here says a scientist is found dead. Um, and it was ruled a suicide. So, uh, Daddy Barrar... Oh, I'm going to regret calling him that. But Father Barrar is um, a scientist, so I'm willing to bet he was investigating the Carnis and was doing research into it and things like that, and he was getting closer and closer to the truth, so they had him killed. Uh, whether he was attacked by a mimic or whether he was just, you know, done in by someone else, they basically killed him because he was getting too close to the truth, and now Vincent wants to basically find out what happened. And at this point, the point where the Grady siblings made the tape, I don't think people were aware of Mimics yet. Maybe that was the first Mimic. Who knows? Maybe the first Mimic was specifically sent after Father Barrar. And because as they're walking home, uh, you can hear they're talking about, oh, this would be uh, the perfect time for that serial killer to jump out. So I think, while nobody believes it was suicide, they probably think it was a serial killer or a murderer, and they're not aware of what mimics are. And maybe that video was the first time that mim a mimic was actually caught on tape, or, you know, properly, fully encountered. Uh, so that's my thought for that, at least. And then, of course, uh, the government, new trier, whoever they are, uh, decided to step in and cover that up, because, you know, that's bad, bad news, business, bad, yeah. Bad publicity, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, yeah, so what's after Mimic? Um, yeah, after Mimic is the Harvester. Oh, that video. That That's probably, of them all, probably my favourite video so far in Vita Carnis, because even though very little visually happened, the sound design on that was just... That was good. That was good. Let me just uh, get to that. So yes, the Harvester, uh, basically, uh, it killed uh, the child, and possibly then you used that child to lure in the mother. Um, so it basically got two meals out of it. And a uh, newspaper clipping here we have says that the authorities refuse to handle the Harvester, and are only putting up signs to warn them of their presence. And the reason for that, I'm pretty sure, is because they're using them as defences. Uh, we see in the Anomaly report that all the Harvesters start moving and they start congregating around this um, this bay area where the central island is. Um, I've learned that that um, area is Lake Hudson or Hudson Bay in Canada and that the island in the middle doesn't actually exist in the real world. That's a fictional island in the story. Um, so yeah, the police, no, not the police, but the authorities, uh, the government, are refusing to handle it because they're congregating the harvesters on purpose to form a protective ring against their um, base of operations, as it were. So that's the harvesters. Uh, we have the host after that, the host of influence, but I don't think we need to say much more on that other than what we've already picked up. They produce spores and they're actively creating um, byproducts with these spores to forcibly infect people with them. Um, in the documentary, it says if you go home and wait like 36 hours, I think it was, uh, you're cured of that, but I'm not sure I believe it. So whether that's true or not, I mean, uh, the documentary is supposed to be more reliable than anything the government puts out, but that does sound a little bit sus to me. But either way, they're trying to... Um, get people to ingest these spores forcibly in order to mind control them or something, I'm not sure, uh, or just create more sacrifice victims, who knows. But I noticed one of the things here, it says that crawl is not palatable, so 
you can't eat crawl. I mean, doesn't surprise me, but they're trying to push forward that you can eat crawl with like these. The only reason they're doing that is to get people to cultivate crawl. Crawl isn't palatable. You can't eat it. Unless maybe you put the flavor enhancer on it, which makes you able to eat it because it overrides your senses. But the reason they're saying you can eat crawl is to try and make people cultivate crawl so that they can grow more, more advanced um, carnies. Or at least that's my thought. But it says at the bottom there, told different things about Mimic Defense. Yep. Oh, that also says Mimic Defense 1987. So that's a different date. Hmm. Trimming lifespan it says trimming lifespan is two to four years, but then in the um, the pet care guide it says that it's about eight years. But I think just the difference between that is because they're domestic, so they're they're more safe and they're less likely to be killed by something else. So I don't think that's a discrepancy. I think that's just the difference between a wild and a domestic species. Um, monolith. I don't think we have that much information on, to be honest. Um, this was supposed to be the monolith video, but then it was interrupted by the conspiracy board. So, um, let's take a look. I don't think anything else pops up. Oh, hang on. There was a little bit there. Uh, monolith location censored and group investigation. Yeah. So I think, um, monolith, uh, location is that island because that's where the facility is. And so they have the monolith around that to um, protect against it and group investigation the one time that they did try to attempt a group investigation and or retaliation against the monolith is when the emp blast happened you know we saw that video of like all the lightning and stuff coming down that's um basically the monolith defending themselves so i think that is about um everything that has happened up until uh the final episode um <clears throat> except carcass um, Carcass is the, um, the anti-Nutria, I guess. I suppose they're still a government entity, but a different government entity. Um, let's see. Right, I wanted to go back and double check because it did pop up on the board. Uh, Carcass is a private organisation of Containment and Research Consult Association Society. And they've been experiencing backlash from the government agencies about COP and violation of newly introduced policies. So yeah, I'm willing to bet the newly introduced policies have been newly introduced by uh, Nutria, uh, the cult entities, and that Carcass, a private organization, are trying to do their business as usual, but they're being stopped, they're being stymied, which is why we get this video message. Uh, Carcass are reaching out to Vincent, uh, you know, POV. And this is why uh, Vincent Barrar ends up being wanted, because they eventually learn that this guy is out there doing this, trying to fight against them, and they're trying to stop it. Um, and then we get to Facility Zero, uh, which appears to be a successful raid um, on the uh, on the facility, which Carcass were able to carry out because of all this information that Vincent gathered together and sent back to them basically so i think that's the story beats of uh season one of uh beta carney so we've sort of set up a world uh we've set up organizations uh you know uh, for and against good and bad and then we have our pov character who is most likely vincent and they've had their first strike against the uh the cult new trier to figure out what is going on and i figure that's what season two is going to be about, about uh, how this all sort of like comes together and whether this, well, maybe we'll get some more information on what the singularities are, um, how the Viticanis came to be, what the metaphor of the storybook is going to tie into be. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see some more of that in the future. Uh, big props to this guy, Darian Quilloy, and... Um, yeah, I wish you all the best for season two, and I uh, look forward to it. And I hope you'll be joining me as well when we come back back to it. Hopefully a lot sooner than I did with season one, because I've just got a lot of stuff to catch up on in general. So, 
that is it for now. I need to go and take care of my throat because I am starting to lose my voice. I think my sinuses are getting a little bit inflamed. Um, so I'm just going to wrap it up quickly. All the usual stuff, like, comment and subscribe, suggestions, etc, etc. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.